Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. You know when you're angry and you write a really bad negative email to someone, uh, maybe it's your boss, or someone you work with, or maybe it's an internet uh, provider, something like that, and then you get told uh, with some advice that maybe you should just wait till the next day before you send that email because sleep is a great resetting of our emotions, our feelings. And sometimes when you wake up the next morning, you don't feel quite as angry. And this has never happened to me before when it comes to one of my videos until the 31st of October, 2023, after Point Terra released their Appendix 4C for the September quarter. This particular results or these particular results did anger me enough that I put this video on hold by one day and has my feelings subsided since yesterday. So I'm recording this video on the 1st of November. No, it hasn't. I'm thinking exactly the same thing as I was thinking yesterday. This was an absolutely awful quarterly report from the company. In fact, I'm going to say not only it is the most disappointing Appendix 4C for the September quarter to financial year 2024, it's one of the most disappointing quarterlies I have seen for a few years. Not the worst quarterly, but the most disappointing. And I'll touch upon why this particular report from Point Terra was the most disappointing Appendix 4C for a few years during the rest of this video. Now, before we do all that, so this company, Point Terra, was founded in 2015, uh, listed on the ASX in July 2016, backdoor listing, which was all the rage back then in 2016 via, via Soil Sub Technologies. Now, the share price of this company didn't do much until about 2020. I'll touch about upon that in a second. CEO is Ian Olson. He has 6% stake in the company. And one of the largest shareholders, not the largest shareholders, but one of the largest shareholders is Capital B, which is related to Bevan Slattery, and they own 4.7% of this company. And that's when the interest in Point Terra really took off. This, if I remember correctly, was either in June or July of 2020. Now, the markup of this company reached a high of $550 million in February 221, uh, 2021, not 221, that was over 2,000 years ago. Uh, yeah, $550 million. That's at a share price of 90 cents. So there was a lot of interest in this company. And I was a shouter at that point in time. And I was looking at this company in February 2021. And I was thinking, I probably should take profits. But this company has a lot of promise, a lot of potential. Unfortunately, and my big mistake was not taking complete profits at that point in time. I did take a little bit of profits. But the markup of this company has dropped from $550 million to 41 million. That's at a share price of 5.9 cents. I did have a look at the share price right now. It's about six cents or so. So the share price of this company has fallen by more than 90% in just over two and a half years. And there's a main reason behind that. And that is the underperformance and under delivery of the company and its management. And the TIG code for this company is still one of my favorite TIG codes, 3DP. Now, a lot of time when I show you an Appendix 4C or quarterly report from a company, I look at the previous year's quarter. So I just want to compare quarter on quarter. But for Point Terra in this video, let's go back to the June quarter financial year 20. And this was around the time I started to become really interested in this company. This is a time when the market became really interested in the company. And it was this particular core report that really drew my interest. I went, wow, this company could be something. So even though this company only had $820,000 of receipts, they weren't spending a lot of money. And that is impressive that you can generate $820,000 of receipts and be operating cash flow positive at the same time. Now, they were held by government grants and tax incentives. But if you take that away, they were still operating cash flow positive by over $100,000. And not only that, the cash on hand actually grew by $100,000 because they weren't spending much money in financing and investing activities. So I still remember back in June or July 2020, seeing this particular Appendix 4C, and I just went, wow. I went, this company 
if they can maintain uh, a hold and a lid on spending and keep on increasing their receipts on customers, this company is going to have really great margins. That was my, probably the, I won't say my expectations, but that was my bull case for this company. Probably my extreme bull case for this company, that if they maintain these sort of margins, if they keep a lid on spending, this company would be a massive company in about five years' time. So we're talking about financial year 2025. And right now, they are definitely not headed in that direction. Now, before we have a look at their September quarter results, I want to go back to the June quarter results. And the June quarter results were disappointing because they only had cash receipts of $800,000, uh, which sits, seem really, really low. Cash flow negative by about $1.8 million. But they did mention in the commentary that they collected $1.8 million of cash during the month of July 2023. So my expectations for the September quarter, and this is the reason why this particular quarter for Portera was extremely disappointing because my expectations for this particular quarter were quite high. Because of this $1.8 million of cash collected in the month of July, so still two months to go before the end of the quarter, I thought, reasonably thought, that the receipts for Portera in the September quarter should be over $3 million. And if they were over $3 million, and I was thinking potentially as high as $4 million, I thought this company would be operating cash flow and free cash flow positive. So obviously, because I've already said this is the most disappointing appendix 4C for a few years, they fell well short of my expectations. And that's again why this is the most disappointing report I've seen quarter report I've seen for a few years. So let's have a look at a September quarter results for Point Terra. And here it is, cash receipts of just over 2 million. So remember, they received $1.8 million of receipts in July, which means in the next two months, only 200,000. And I saw that number and went, that has to be a mistake. Surely it's a mistake. So that means... Uh, the company was operating cash flow positive, even though, or negative, even though they received $886,000 in government grants and tax incentives. So just go back, compare the June quarter of financial year 20 to this particular quarter a few years later. In fact, I think that uh, June quarter was financial year 19, not financial year 20. So anyway, just compare these two quarters, just over three years apart. And even though receipts have increased, the company has significantly increased their spending. So they also did a couple raising during the year. And that's why the cash on hand actually increased by 1.4 million. So over the past three and a bit years, cash receipts are up 1.2 million. Now, it is tricky to compare two quarters for this company because receipts can be quite lumpy, as I'll show you when we look at the cash receipts history. But look at the spending and the increase in spending over the past three and a bit years. Research and development up $500,000. Product manufacturing and operating costs up $500,000. Administration costs up $200,000. Staff costs up $1.5 million. And in this particular quarter, staff costs $1.7 million. Cash receipts is to just over $2 million. So most of their cash receipts goes to paying their staff. And that is my big question around Point Terror right now, is why has there been a significant increase in staff costs, because it seems, based off what's happened over the past three years, this increase in staff costs has done nothing to the underlying performance of the business. So possibly they just have way too much staff at this point in time to drive the company towards being operating cash flow, free cash flow positive and profitable. Another question I have is what happened to this particular thing they used to include in all their reports? So I don't know if you've been following Point Terror for very long, but they will always include this cumulative cash receipts and ACV, which is annual contract value in their reports. This is one of the last times they've included it in one of their appendix 4Cs back in about one year ago. And you can just see the ACV climbing quite nicely through time and the cumulative cash receipts improving for each successive year. And then all of a sudden, they stopped including this in their report. Maybe they don't want to tell us what the ACV is because there were a lot of questions about the disparity between ACV and cash receipts. 
which is understandable because there was a big disparity. And if the ICV or annual contract value has increased from $20.1 million one year ago, where are the receipts right now? $800,000 in the last quarter, $2 million in this quarter, which means if this ACV number one year ago is accurate enough, this company should be flowing in cash flow in the next quarter, say $5 million of cash receipts, something like that. So something is going on when it comes to Pointera. Now let's have a look. Now let's have a look at receipts history for the company. So this is something I always look at for all companies that have or release appendix 4Cs, 5Bs, or if they're releasing annual reports and half-year reports, I look at revenue history, not receipts history. But thankfully, revenue history is provided by a lot of platforms out there. Receipts history from appendix 4Cs or 5Bs is not provided by any platform that I know of. So I do track the performance of companies, particularly when it comes to cash receipts. And if I see cash receipts increasing through time, then I delve, will delve a little bit deeper into the company. So this is the cash receipts history for Pointera going back to 2017, the December quarter of that particular year. And to be honest with you, cash receipts did nothing for about three years. And then we started to see cash receipts climbing. So the really good quarter was that June quarter 2020, which would have been financial year 19, $820,000 receipts. And their receipts fell back, and but they continued to climb. So you can see the lumpiness, particularly between, say, 2020 and all the way through to 2022. But receipts were going higher. They did mention in one quarter that they were attempting to smooth out the receipts uh, eventually, will eventually smooth out receipts because it's just the nature of the business and the nature of the contracts and when they receive receipts. But if you look at the last two and a bit years, you would struggle to see or put in a trend line that was increasing for receipts. And it also seems like the lumpiness in receipts has actually increased. Uh, and it is concerning. The last two quarters of receipts have been significantly lower than what you would expect if receipts were growing. So something has significantly happened in the last, say, six months of Point Terra where receipts are significantly lower than they should be. And that is why when this company releases their December quarter results in January, this company want to see a significant increase in receipts from just over $2 million. In fact, this company should be seeing their receipts grow above $4 million in one quarter. In fact, the record quarter for Pointera was $3.44 million back in the September quarter one year ago. So that was one year ago. At that point in time, there was still a really noticeable trend up in receipts. But that trend is under threat right now based off this receipts history uh, chart. Now let's have a look at the charts for Pointera. The first one here is a weekly chart going back to March 2020. And in the next slide, we'll look at the daily chart. And you can definitely see the hype period for this company, which started in July 2020, just after the company, or well, just before the company released their quarterly report. And the start on the hype period for this company was just the name Bevan Slattery. Uh, he bought some shares in this company, and that triggered um, a, bit of, a bit of frenzy in this company's shares. And the share price went from about five cents just before that up to a high of just over 90 cents in the first uh, few months of 2021. So February, 2021. And ever since then, the share price has been in a well-defined downtrend. Not only that, the share price right now at just over five cents or around six cents is just around the levels before that hyped up period started back in July 2020. So the share price has returned back to those levels, if you can believe it. But the worst thing is, because this company has done a few capital raising, shares on issue have actually increased. So the markup and the valuation of this company is actually higher than it was back in July of 2020. And if we take a look at the daily chart, it's just a tale of woe, apart from one little period. And that little period was late July. I think it was around about, if I remember correctly, uh, something like July the 27th, I'm just going to confirm that, July the 28th, when the company did announce a 10-year U.S. energy utility capex program, um, which, you know, did get the market excited 
In fact, on that particular day, the 28th of July, the share price of Pointera rose by over 100%. Yes, 100%. Not only that, look at the volume, massive volume coming in on that day. But there was also massive volume the next day, and there was a large sell-off. So a lot of shareholders who had bought in high prices in the past saw the opportunity to get out. And so we did see extra supply come on the market. And that's why the share price abs took an absolute dive. And then when the company released their appendix 4C on October the 31st, the share price of the company dropped, what was it about 36%? Yeah, 36.3%, uh, which is one of the biggest down days for this company. And again, there was pretty big volume. And I probably would surmise that a lot of shareholders are just fed up with this company and the management of Point Terra, and they're just getting out. It could also mean we are reaching the point of capitulation when shareholders just have had enough with this company and they just have to sell. Now, I am holding hope that the December quarter for this company will be really good. The receipts will absolutely go off, be significantly higher than they what they were for the September quarter. But even though that is my hope, I think there is just something seriously wrong with the cash receipts for the last two months. Uh, there's something going on with this company. I just don't know what it is because I would have expected, uh, even if this company had one down month, like that one down quarter, like they did have in the June quarter, the next quarter should be pretty good, a significant increase in receipts. And there was that $1 million uh, in July comment. And that did raise my hopes that this particular September quarter was going to, going to be really good. So even though I'm thinking, there is a possibility December quarter could be really, really good. We're talking four to five million dollars of receipts. I my hope level is actually quite low because I'm now quite skeptical about the management of this company. So that is all I have for this video, focusing on probably the most disappointing. No, not probably, definitely the most disappointing quarterly I have seen from a company in years. And the reason it's disappointing is because my expectations for this particular quarter were significantly higher than what the company delivered. Now, I am focusing on cash receipts. And cash receipts for this company can be quite lumpy. But the very fact that we have had two really bad quarters in a row is a bit dodgy, a bit concerning. Maybe not dodgy, but definitely concerning. There is something amiss with Point Terra. So this company needs to deliver in the December quarter. So if you have any questions, any thoughts about Point Terra, if you're a shouter of this company, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So leave your opinion in the comment section of this video. And otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.